Om Swastiastu, welcome to Usada Bali. We offer our cultural, medicinal, and artistic content from Ubud Bali. Your generosity will help support our artists, practitioner, and staff, and is gratefully appreciated. Om Swastiastu. Greetings to everyone. Uh, it's really wonderful to be back here again in USADA. And uh, we are completing the third talk in uh, a series of three about a subject which is very close to my heart called Trihita Karana. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the other ones, I'll just make a brief introduction of myself. My name is uh, Chok Gede Kartiasa, and I'm from Ubud in Bali and uh, I'm uh, half Balinese and half Australian so that's where the accent comes from and uh, it's been a, a, a wonderful honor to be here in USADA uh, several times over the last weeks during this special time uh, on the planet talking about some different subjects which have come up and uh, we've been talking about something called Trihita Karana which is the Balinese philosophy that lies you know beneath the way we live here. and it's not just a philosophy but it's a lived it's a lived philosophy uh, it's very practical and it's integrated into our lives and this is the third talk in in a series of these three and the first one we spoke about humans relationship with uh, nature yeah fundamental relationship with nature, with the environment, with uh, animals, with, uh, with the elements around us. In the second talk we spoke about humans and their relationship with each other, so the human to human relationship. And in this one we're going to talk about uh, humankind's relationship with the divine. We have many different words for this one's relationship with God, one's relationship with spirit, one's relationship with the Creator, one's relationship with the universe. There's so many different uh, ways that this is described in many different cultures. And it's really in my, uh, coming from two cultures, two very different cultures, the West and the East, I see that this philosophy is actually a universal philosophy. It's not just Balinese, it's not exclusive to this, to this island. Um, you know, the number three is very, very important. It's, uh, you know, even in the Christian tradition, the Trinity, and in our tradition here, the Hindu-Buddhist tradition in Bali, mixed with a bit of the animism uh, from the Polynesian cultures that were preceding all of the religions that came in. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the, uh, ele the symbolism of three goes through many, uh, Trimurti, yeah, uh, Shiva, Brahma, and Vishnu. And, the, um, and then also this Trihita Karana, which is very important. And now it's a big subject to talk about the divine. Uh, I feel quite humbled to be the one speaking about this on this day uh, because it's really a process, something that is a very personal process. And I'm, uh, I'm sharing my personal views on this. And it may be very different to yours, and it may be very different to uh, the people around me. But uh, here goes nothing. So, um, what I'm going to use as one of the basis of this is to talk about ritual in life. Uh, there are many, many people speaking about uh, relationships with God and, and things like that. In Bali, one of the ways that we uh, create space for this process is through ritual. It's a very, very important part of our life here. I would dare say that Bali, Balinese culture, spiritual path here is probably one of the most ritual rich cultures on the planet, uh, ritual intense cultures on the planet. We have rituals for almost anything, uh, being in the house, putting a new room on the house, uh, building a cattle pen, uh, anything. Uh, building and digging a well. We have rituals for almost everything here and they're not simple. There's actually an entire science behind the rituals here and this science uh, is very much aligned with Tantra and um, 
the alchemy, yeah? the alchemy of incorporating the elements to bring a spiritual vibration into a material object or into a house or into a space or to purify, to cleanse those uh, aspects within ourselves as well, which is actually the most important part. And so um, our version of prayer in Bali is also a way to ground oneself through a ritualistic practice. Uh, and for me, it's, uh, for me, it's how I was raised. It's kind of uh, normal. I feel a little bit strange talking about it, but I take it for granted as uh, a lot of us do a lot of things. And I realize that maybe I can take something from my daily life I believe sharing experience is the most important thing and share that with people who are from other cultures as well as uh, maybe I'll impart some knowledge to someone who's already in Bali and, and has a good understanding of that. So um, every household in Bali has its own temple. We're probably one of the few cultures that allocates perhaps uh, more space and uh, maybe even more luxury to, to our little house temples than to our bedrooms or to our living rooms or things like that. Um, most of the decoration, most of the special materials in, in the building of a house actually go in to the creation of this small house temple. And we use here a method, uh, it's almost like if anyone's familiar with Feng Shui, Asta Kosala Kosali. And this is the geomancy the placement of everything in relation to direction, in relation to the cosmos. So everything we do in our life is, um, is spaced and is coordinated so that it is in harmony with the energy flow of the cosmos, uh, of the nature around us and everything like that. In our households, the, uh, uh, for different people call it different things. I call it a marajan. It's also called a sangha. Uh, this is usually in the northeast corner of the household. So this represents the head. So the, the layout of, of a typical Balinese housing compound is laid out almost like a human body. So we have the head where the spiritual center of the, of the household is. And this is uh, in orientation to the holy mountain here, Gunung Agung. So, actually, depending on which part of Bali, this direction can be uh, is always in relationship to Gunung Agung itself. So, people in the north of Bali actually have theirs facing south, but they still call it north. Yeah, interesting. Um, and uh, so, in this little, uh, sometimes they're bigger, sometimes they're smaller, sometimes they're uh, luxurious, uh, sometimes they're very simple uh, and ascetic. Um, we have different shrines which represent uh, different deities of the clan or the family. So we're in Bali, we're built around a series of different clans and uh, we have a very strong ancestral worshipping culture here. We have uh, a shrine dedicated to ancestors. Well, in, in the So the, the small family temple itself will have uh, what's called a Padmasana and this is the universal shrine yeah it's the basic one of the basic shrines that every place can have if you were just going to build one this is the one you build and this is facing northeast and uh, this is a representation of the universe it has many different layers starting from the base which is the representation of a turtle I find it very interesting that the Native Americans also, some of the tribes, refer to their land as Turtle Island, as a, as a, as a turtle that uh, forms the foundation of their, their land. It's exactly the same as what we talk about here. Yeah, makes me wonder how we were once connected uh, or whether it was more of a telepathic connection or a universal culture perhaps that preceded all of us. Yeah, um, And then we, the next step up, which is often represented by and dragons are in Bali. We consider them 
And then above that we have a, a level which is almost represented by a human form. And then further levels. So, and then at the very top of that, the very apex of the Padmasana is a representation of Ida Sangyang Widiwasa, which is represented as a hermaphroditic figure. Yeah. So the non the non the which lies on time, space, matter and duality. Uh, sometimes it's represented in a figure form, sometimes just uh, uh, represented symbolically. Yeah? And this is where we, we usually place our offerings on the top of that on days. And uh, those days are determined by the Balinese calendar. And I think I've explained that in a few past talks, that the Balinese calendar is, uh, you know, every activity within the life of a, a Balinese family is also governed by astrological auspicious days. So again, it's another connection with the movements of the planets, the movements of the cosmos. Um, we have a very unique system of astrology here, uh, and choose on particular days when those astrological is a very, very special place to uh, when you need to connect, yeah? When you want to connect with, with the universe, with God, with the absolute, with whatever feels right to call it that. And um, I think it's one of the few cultures where every, every, every house actually really puts a, a, a lot of energy, actually, and a lot of space into this. It's considered the most important part of the house. So when we go in there, we go into a state, I mean, you can, sometimes we just go in to meditate or uh, obviously there's auspicious days and ceremonies where we are given free. And, uh, the daily and this is where we give our personal offering to the divine in the form of a prayer. And now I would like to actually uh, explain that and maybe if nice space maybe sit down and um, if you have some flowers with you you can you can take a few flowers or just watch and um, and see how we do this uh, because it's a it's like a almost yeah that's it's a formula it's a structure for for connecting with this with, uh, divine and I find it's a very good thing to do actually before meditation so I find it's very grounding um, it sort of puts uh, almost like your internal cosmology in order and then uh, going into meditation after that I find it's uh, very good for focusing yeah okay, so once again everything is connected and the more that I've been doing these talks the more I found that uh, Trihita Karana uh, humans relationship with nature for example also comes into this humans relationship with the divine or with spirit as does you know the relationship from human to human everything is actually interconnected they're interconnected cycles so in the prayer and in all of the rituals in bali uh, the, our connection with nature is very important all of the materials that we use in our offerings traditionally are made of natural materials and they all are here to represent the different elements Pancha Mahabhuta, yeah, the five different elements within uh, creation, within the earthly creation. Uh, I think I've spoken again, again about this uh, in the past, but those are the element of fire, the element of water, the element of air, the element of earth, and the element of Akka, or the etheric, etheric, uh, etheric field, that which is elements and brings everything together. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, I don't know if you can see it properly there, but this is, this is called a Pamuspan. Pamuspan, this is uh, the traditional way that we uh, present our, our, it's like a, a prayer dish, I guess, with all of these elements on it that are represented within those five elements. Yeah. 
I'll just tip it up here a little bit. I hope you can see it there. But uh, we have flowers from the garden. Uh, ideally, we choose the different colors to represent the different prayers that we're going to offer. But really, any flowers, anything that you have from around you is, is, is most important that, to use. There's all, often white and yellow represented. I'll talk about this as we go through. Blue, green, red, uh, sometimes darker colors as well. And then we have this, which is a kwangen, which we save for our, it's like a, again, it's a representation. It's almost like a symbolic figure. Uh, representing uh, all of the different elements in one, including inside is a, is a coin, a traditional Balinese coin, which is made of also a, a special me a metallurgical formula. It's made of five metals. We call it uh, panchadatu, yeah? And uh, so there's iron, there's um, uh, brass, uh, well, it, it's basically like a brass, iron, silver, um, copper, bronze, uh, and a little gold as well in there. Yeah. So everything uh, has this sacred formula to make sure that it's still con connected to spirit. We have here bija, which is little rice. Uh, it's, it's rice soaked in holy water. And then we have the holy water to represent that element of water. The flowers represent earth and also a joining of all the elements. The kwangin represents all elements together. Uh, and then we always have, of course, incense, which is representing the fire element. Yeah. Now, air, how is that represented? Air is represented through our breathing uh, and also through the mantra, through sound. Yeah. So sometimes if we're uh, in prayer, led by a priest, the priest will ring his bell, and that is also a representation of the air element. Then the final element, akasha, which is really everything together. But I would say it is actually the prayer, him or herself, who brings the akashic, uh, the etheric quality to that prayer. Yeah. And uh, so, in a fine way, and we always you know, find a, a, a sacred place. And again, you can do this anywhere in the house. Often uh, inside our houses, we have small shrines as well called uh, Plankiran, uh, which is just a place where we, we make sure that, you know, the, the spiritual energy is held in a pure way. So find your place. Um, and we start with usually the element of fire. There are mantras for almost anything. Uh, for lighting and incense, we have a mantra. Om Ang Dupodi Pastraya Nama. Every action that we do can be a sacred action. We have mantras for purifying the flowers before we pray. Yeah. Which we usually say, Om Puspadantaya Nama. And um, we use the fire to purify ourselves. Usually we've already washed our hands, we've washed our face before we do this. And so I'd like, to, um, I'd like to take you through this. And in Bali we have the classical uh, prayer is usually five different prayers. Yeah? Five different prayers. Uh, we start with the prayer with empty hands. And this is a prayer to ask for uh, purification of our spirit because it's through our spirit that we connect to the divine it's actually the spirit the spark of the divine within each of us but often during our daily activities we forget about that we forget that we have that spark of the divine in us so coming into prayer coming into this ritual uh, it just it opens up that communication channel and asks for purity next we'll often pray uh, ne the next prayer, not often, it's, it's always is the prayer to the sun as the witness. There are two versions. Sometimes we ask for the sun to give witness. Sometimes we ask for Shiva to give witness. This is really, uh, if that is not within your belief system, often it's asking 
the divine asking uh, God for to witness this prayer, to witness this uh, offering that we're giving, this act of devotion. I personally add in an extra prayer, which is uh, to Mother Earth. Yeah. In many of the Balinese ceremonies, if they're larger ceremonies, uh, we will offer a, pr a prayer to Mother Earth. We call Ibu Pratiwi. Uh, and I offer this after the uh, prayer to the sun, because I believe that as humans or as, as beings on this planet, we are the integration point between the heavens and the earth. So therefore, to offer, uh, it's something I, I, I felt instinctively myself to do, uh, to offer our prayers only to w that which is above, uh, I believe uh, we get a balance if we offer a prayer also for witness from that, that which is below us, yeah? That which we, we live on, which sustains our life, which is also Mother Earth, yeah? And then uh, the next prayer is a very personal prayer, which is often, uh, you know, coming from a Balinese family, we pray to our ancestors, we pray to the God of the temple, the deity of the temple. You know, we have so many different kinds here. Um, and uh, I've been asked many times to explain, oh, what is this prayer about? You know, because sometimes people uh, from other cultures, other religions also come with me to pray. And I explained it this way. It's really uh, a prayer to your personal uh, ancestors from any culture, from any part of the, the world. Uh, if you feel obliged, if you feel good to do this, pray to the spirits of the land in which you're in. Yeah, give a devotion to them or, you know, the deity of the temple. Uh, that's what we do classically in Bali. And also uh, a prayer to your I've even suggested praying to your guardian angel, you know, praying to your, uh, or you, some people have what they call spirit guides and these kinds of things. It's all of those with you, because whether you know it or not, they are with you. And sometimes when we ask for the guidance, that's when we receive it. But if we don't ask, if we don't, uh, if we don't acknowledge that existence, then they're happy to just sit back and watch us uh, without interfering. Because we have free will, yeah? We can't be, inter we can't be, uh, we can't be communicated with if we don't open the channel to do that, yeah. And then we have another prayer which is uh, to, to the Supreme God, as we call, yeah? Ida Sangya um, to the to your uh, I, I've explained it as the God of your heart, the God of your realization. Yeah. It's a um, personal prayer from many different cultures or backgrounds will have, um, will have this uh, connection with, the, with that particular prayer. And then the last one is a prayer of gratitude. This is always uh, the way that we end our rituals in Bali. Uh, is with a prayer of gratitude, of thanks uh, for everything that we've received. But without attachment to receiving anything, you know, we may be praying for guidance or something like this. The more we attachment to that, the less likely we are perhaps even to experience that. So it's really just a, a, a prayer of gratitude for everything in, in creation, everything within our reality, and uh, for all the lessons that we've received through our life through our living our, our life. So, if you're in a um, comfortable position, why don't we begin? So the first thing, uh, I'll, I'll pray and I'll explain it as we go. So we uh, purify our hands in, in the smoke and then we offer our first prayer uh, to request that our spirit is purified. Raise our hands. And in the next prayer, we're going to ask for witness. This is a prayer to request witness from the Divine. And the Divine manifestation of witness 
for us is, is uh, the sun. We call the sun by the name Surya. Uh, and it's also, depending on, on who's leading this prayer, it's also a prayer often to Shiva or a manifestation of the infinite. And I'll often choose a yellow or a white flower for this one. So may we offer this prayer together. And often we'll keep uh, this particular flower in our, this is called an udang, to make sure that that uh, connection with the divine witness goes through the day. Yeah. And then uh, we offer a prayer, well I offer a prayer to Mother Earth in this next one and I'll often choose a, a flower that is representative of that. Sometimes I choose a kananga, sometimes I choose a uh, one of these blue flowers, uh, usually a darker color. It's just something that I go with instinctively. And I'll, I'll ask for the blessings of Mother Earth and to guide me to tread on her beautiful planet with as much consciousness, awareness, and compassion as I can. The next prayer, which is the prayer to the deity of your place, the deity of the temple, uh, to your ancestor spirits, to your guides, guardian angels, anything that is a personal connection to you in the spirit world, uh, this is the next prayer and uh, it's a personal prayer. I'll often just ask for guidance. I'll often just give my acknowledgement and uh, my thanks for them for those on the uh, on the spirit plane who are with me, yeah. We raise our flowers. And then we have our last prayer. Second last, uh, before we give thanks, yeah. And this is uh, to the Supreme, to the Absolute. Our name for that is Ida Sang Yang Widiwasa in Bali. And it's often a mixture of different flowers, different colors to represent the different elements of the universe. And once again, I mean, this is a very personal prayer. Uh, sometimes people ask for something, yeah. Uh, in this prayer, in the mantra of this prayer, there is the word anugraha, which is uh, 
uh, asking for a blessing or a gift from the divine, uh, that can be really uh, whatever is, is, is in your field at the time. Uh, for me, during this time, I found that I simply ask that I be uh, a channel, an open channel to hear uh, the voice of the divine. That's my personal prayer. And then, in our closing prayer, this is a prayer of gratitude, of thanks. And this is once again uh, a very, very personal thing for everybody. Um, but I believe it's one of the universal principles, the importance of gratitude. So we'll end our prayers with that last prayer of thanks and gratitude for all in creation. Thank you. And my gratitude to, to everybody who was with me on that prayer. Um, I'm sure we were. Uh, I feel personally a lot more centered now, actually, after that prayer, even though I'm not used to It's the first time I think I've prayed in front of a camera, which was quite uh, strange, but actually very peaceful. So. Um, and thankfully, I'm in Usada here, which is, uh, which is a sacred space in itself yeah, for yoga, for, for, the, uh, for the sacred traditions. So that helped me very much as well. Um, that is my little sharing, actually, about, about uh, our relationship with the divine. And really, it's in, in the texts which talk about um, Tritakarana, you know, one of, the, one of the passages which is talking about this uh, third principle, the human's relationship with God, with the divine, is uh, quite simple. It says, you know, make sure you pray every day. It's quite simple. And uh, this kind of a, uh, a prayer in itself is already a manifestation of many, many different elements of that. So the Balinese act of ritual and prayer I believe is quite unique in that it's very much a, an, uh, a joining and integration of two fields. Uh, it's very earthy, yeah? it's, very, um, it's very connected to nature. Nature, the elements of nature are all an integral part of that, of that small ritual. But it also, with that foundation that comes from the earth consciousness, we then have a connection to the divine cosmic, which is which is out there. And I believe that um, having that balance between the two poles, between the not losing our connection with the earth, yeah, but maintaining that connection and then, um, and then connecting with the divine, uh, I believe that that infuses a different mood, a different uh, attitude, if you like, um, that we can actually feel in Bali. Yeah? 
there's not this uh, just purely going off into this into space in you know up going up only we go down and we go up and we bring it into the middle and it's from the middle point uh, that we have a connection to to uh, a holistic connection to all of creation so um, that is what I would like to share today with everybody. Uh, it's been quite an honor actually to present these uh, three sections of Trihita Karana. I feel very humbled uh, and honored that I was invited to do this. And again, what I've shared is really my version of it. I've shared what we do in Bali. Uh, and for those of you who would like to take that with you, uh, I, I, uh, I give my thanks and I, I apologize if there's anything that I've shared which is not within alignment with your spiritual beliefs. Uh, there is, uh, I'd make no attempt to impose any of my beliefs on anyone else. And uh, that's also another very important part of the Balinese spiritual tradition, which is that uh, we, we always uh, try not to impose our belief system onto anyone else, even uh, foreign guests who live here. And we're very happy to do our own thing and keep going and welcome those who want to come in and join. Uh, but perhaps uh, my feeling is that this particular little ritual here has a universal roots and, um, and some people, uh, but, but more in alignment with the indigenous cultures, I believe. I think in every indigenous culture, whether it's uh, in, in Asia, you know, Australia and the Americas, Europe, the Celtic culture perhaps even, will often, um, the Druidic uh, movement, they'll often incorporate these different elements of nature into their, into their rituals and into their connection with the divine. So everybody who is with me, I give my deep gratitude and thanks. And um, may we all maintain that uh, personal relationship with the divine that uh, connects all of us. Thank you very much. Om Santi 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 Om. Thank you for watching. If you find our videos informative and helpful, please consider contributing to our effort.